Sylvia, thank you for being on AHA, a house for arts. I'm very excited to have you here on the show. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Um, you know, when most people think of art, uh, they think of painting or sculpture or something made with simple tools. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they think of an artist, they think of someone trained in the fine arts, you know, trained to do painting and sculpture. The work that you do is, it looks quite different from what people think of, mm -hmm. typically think of when they think of art. You know, why do you create works like these? Okay, so I actually was a physics uh, major in undergrad, and I loved anything to do with science and experiments and especially electronics. And I took this class in quantum mechanics and we came up with this idea of um, just the cloud of possibilities that are out there that only kind of coalesce when someone observes it. And when we were talking about that, I thought that's exactly the type of stuff I wanna investigate, that's art. And so I, I have the skills here, I can make things. Uh, I want to make art out of it. So uh, right after college, that's what I started working to do is make artworks that were interactive, that dealt with uh, computers, that dealt with machines, mm -hmm. and sort of questioning what it is about these technologies that we can create interesting um, areas for questioning. Yeah, and so this is really interesting, Sylvia, because it, it sounds like you have a distinctive definition too of art. What is it that makes these types of, of <laughs> tools and technology, what makes them art in your opinion? What makes them art? That, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> because I think the whole idea of what is art, it's large. It's gone away from just being an object to being sort of an experience, to being an atmosphere. And I, for me, what I, love about art is that it can be a questioning. And we take for granted all this digital technology, mm -hmm. uh, electronics that are in our life, and I want to reveal them and to use them to ask questions about what can we do with them? What, what are the uh, cultural implications of these devices and how they're designed? What does it mean for uh, something in a digital space to decay, to uh, break apart, to fail? So these are the things, it's questioning that I come back to. Yeah, yeah, as a form of sort of interrogation and, and, and inquiry, right? Yeah, inquiry, yeah. both to, to question the devices itself, but to ask questions about the roles that those devices have in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Most Americans see art and science as two very different things. And even as different things that come from different or opposing sides of the brain. You know, we might hear people joke around and say things mm -hmm. like, oh, well, I'm right brain, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I have more artistic side, I work more for my emotions. You might hear other people say, well, I'm left brain, so I mm -hmm. use logic, I'm very analytical, I'm very scientific. How do your works blur the boundaries between the subjective and the analytical? Because we just talked about mm -hmm. inquiry a moment mm -hmm. ago. And how do your works also maybe blur the boundaries between these supposedly right or left-brained ways mm -hmm. of seeing the world? Well, I think that the hard division that we have between science and art is in some ways problematic because they are both um, activities that are an attempt to understand our world and our experience. And I think that science can bring uh, one perspective and art brings another needed perspective. And if we come to these things and, and not think about sort of it being, oh, it's overly too technical or it's uh, too emotional and be like, okay, they're, you know, how are they opening up the questions to uh, you know, uh, maybe like in my work, surveillance. Mm. And what I find with that, if I am dealing with a very heavily technical subject um, and about the fact that we have surveillance cameras everywhere, that we have facial recognition, then I'll bring humor into it. So sort of this subjective sort of thing that we all can relate to, we all have this, and make technology that fails at its task somehow. So uh, a camera that's a little insecure and hides from people in there. So. I want it to seem approachable in some ways, yeah. the, especially with technical art. I think that it's important that it doesn't seem to be this very highly scientific program thing, that it's something that um, we're taking everyday objects and using them in a different way. Yeah. 
Would you say that um, exhibiting some of your works in museums or galleries makes science perhaps more approachable? Because you talked about using mm -hmm. humor to make something approachable, something accessible to people. Mm -hmm. you know, when I think about people's responses to art and, and science, you think of an art museum, mm -hmm. it looks very different than, say, a science museum. Science museums have all kinds of interactive elements mm -hmm. and things like that. An art museum, you know, what do you think of? You think of like a white box. Yes, Everyone and, and goes white and gloves like, that white you gloves, wear, and be quiet. Very, very quiet, right? And you have the little like boundary markers that right. you can't get near. Right. I mean, do you deal with these kinds of conceptions about like museums and galleries when you're doing your work? Because you display yeah. your work in galleries. Can um, you talk a bit yeah. about that? So I think that for the type of work that I do, that's technical based, that is interactive. It's difficult to put it in a museum space or gallery space. So for the most part. I have to infiltrate, so find different ways or different venues. Um, but I think it's getting a little different because uh, people are now used to uh, things that are interactive that you touch, and you see museums starting to um, embrace that a little bit more. Um, they're seeing that because of video games and things like that. That's people want to have things that they can touch um, mm. in there. So I try to find sort of these things where at least if I make my pieces that it's plug and play and that <laughs> museums are really like, okay, we can, we can handle this. And it's something that is graspable. And I think humor is the way to do that. You also do collaborations as well mm -hmm. with artists, designers, scientists, musicians. Can you talk a little bit about like, what was, what was one of your favorite collaborations that you've done? Oh, favorite clap. There, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I think for collaboration, it's very important when you're doing things with uh, technology because sometimes to have something happen or occur, you need to, to tap into different types of knowledge bases. So what I, one of my partnerships is with an artist uh, named Catherine Behar, who's based in New York City, and she is a performance artist. And so I love collaborating with her because she comes up with these big ideas that uh, then I have to find a way to involve technology and interaction into it to then add that little aspect. Uh, so one of the things that we did, um, she did a piece called Compositions for Bit, Bit being the little character from Tron um, that would say, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> and she uh, wanted to make these polyhedron things where you have dancers inside of them and um, I created the system for doing the music composition and then composed my own piece to go along with it. And that was a fantastic experience because I worked with her to, and the performers and we did these video wireless things, but also working with composers to create a system that they could compose something for the performance. I think this is really fascinating because I think it, it, it tends to blur the boundaries between different types of human creation, right? Mm -hmm. Would you say that um, creativity is more important in art or in science than you know, in one and the other? Or do you think that creativity is something that's important for both sort of sets oh, of ways of seeing the world? it's hugely important for both. I think you have to be creative as a scientist, uh, definitely when you're coming with problem solving. Um, I love, I teach at Rensselaer um, Polytechnic Institute, and I love having engineers in my class. Um, and uh, I think with the creativity is giving them the ability to create, come up with a creative process. Mm -hmm. um, and then the output from that. Um, but in arts, it's important. And I think the key idea with creativity is to be open to questioning. To me, that's the most important thing. Anyone who questions can be creative, I think. But, you know, it's something that I actually deal with quite a bit in my own work. Mm -hmm. You know, I teach at Skidmore College. I'm an art historian. Um, but I, I teach my students, you know, you're actually solving problems, you know, by using this set of formal analysis, by doing research, mm -hmm. you know, looking into the history behind this work of art. You're solving problems. And I think it's fascinating to have scientists mm -hmm. inside my, my classrooms and seeing how they're kind of going about solving these problems and analyzing different works mm -hmm. of art. And it's been amazing to see um, what different students come up with. Mm -hmm. um, in, in your experience also, you know, you're, you're an educator. Um, mm -hmm. what, is, what has been um, uh, the biggest shift that you've seen um, teaching the kinds of subjects that you do? 
Oh, the biggest shift. And did he say like guess. in the past 10 years? Biggest shift. Um, I think in some ways, there is a shift in the type of um, expectations the students have for themselves. Um, and I also see also the widening of different types of technology that they can use. So um, there is this, since we don't, we deal with the computer, we deal with the phone every day, we tend to then forget that we are also tangible creatures, right? <laughs> that we can draw, that we can move. And so this couch I think actually exists. <laughs> that, yeah, it exists, you it. It that you exists. can get up and that you can. <laughs> and so for me, um, it's this looking at analog materials in a new way. And so um, it's not the end of drawing, but I think it's a rebirth of drawing because now students seem to be like, I haven't done anything like hold a pencil or deal with colors and now I can do that and look what I can, I can draw something. And so I think that the next step is this merging of coming up with hybrid forms that play with all these different media um, with that. Well, thank you so much, Sylvia, for coming yeah. on to the show. It was really exciting talking to you about your work and about the work that you do too at the Institute. Thank you, I enjoyed being here.